Hello Internet, Charles here. This is another edition of Wrenching with Charles, although it's not going to be a complete, you know, this is how I'm doing crap video. This is just a, hey, what are you up to, Charles, video. If you care, I understand if you don't. Um, what I'm doing here, these, as you can tell, are carburetors. Four of them! And, because, you know, it's an inline four. Um, this is something I'm really starting to enjoy, actually. <laughs> uh, when I, this is, these are actually not for my 850. These are for another bike that I haven't shown you yet. At least I don't think I have. Um, I'd like to show you the whole process, what I'm doing, but I only have two hands. My other one is holding the camera, and this kind of requires more than one hand to do all this stuff. And I'm too cheap to buy a tripod. So, just a little, hey, this is what I'm up to. It's winter as I record this, um, officially, in Michigan. has been for about two weeks now, very cold. Um, so there's nothing to do but work on bikes. Um, and... Uh, so I'm rebuilding these carbs. What I did is I they came on a rack, a rail, all together. These are the brackets. These are the brackets holding them together. I disassembled them um, completely, jets and all. You see these ones are still soaking in carb cleaner. And um, I'm at the stage where I'm kind of putting them back together. This one's almost put back together. Um, Got the float bowls in there, or the float, all the floats and jets and stuff back in. Um, needle thing, I need to take this one back apart because the spring slipped in behind the washer and now it's not springy. Um, it should be like how these ones are. No, wait, that's not an example. What's wrong with these? That one's, that one's not right. And I didn't even take it apart yet. Um, with this one, the needles are kind of, like, springy, so that they, they're held, they can move a little, they have a little bit of lateral play, but can move, but uh, otherwise they're, anyway, I'm yammering. Um, so basically when I got these carbs, they had a, uh, DinoJet Stage 3 kit installed, which is for, if you have no stock air box, you just have pod air filters, and like a flow through aftermarket exhaust with no back pressure. That's what a stage three is for. This bike has the stock airbox, has the stock exhaust, and as a result was running way too rich. I would not have bothered cleaning these carbs if I didn't have to take them apart anyway to put the stock jets back in them. So, this is what I'm doing, cleaning the carbs. Uh, anyway, I'm to the point now where I'm I'm um, putting things back together, and one thing I noticed, um, I have my Suzuki service manual, and one thing I noticed is that the um, all the float heights on these are way off, and I don't know if that contributed contributed to it running to the engine running very rich or not. But I see my handy dandy calipers. I have them set to 22.4 millimeters, which is what the float height is supposed to be, and as you can see. As you can see, there's a little space between... Come on, focus. Can you focus? Gonna focus. Focus. Okay, it's not gonna focus, but you can kind of see the... Uh, there's a very, fairly sizable gap between the shoulder of that float and where it's supposed to be, which is the bottom of the um, calipers. So I'm having to fix that on every single one of these carbs. Fun, huh? Another thing I wanted to quickly mention was that uh, these are carbs off of a, um, a Suzuki GS. Um, these are Makuni carbs, but uh, they're very, um, they're rather popular. I think Yamaha's also use them, XS series maybe, um, but also a bunch of other stuff um, uses these. Um, but basically, these are CV carbs. Um, 
I can't remember what the CV stands for. Constant velocity, maybe? Uh, yeah. The, what was I going to say? Um, I'm going to post a link for anyone rebuilding um, Suzuki GS or, and or um, Makuni carbs um, to a carb rebuild tutorial, which is basically what I followed the first time I had to rebuild these, this style of carbs. Um, I think you'll find it helpful. So um, look in the description, follow that. And also, lest I forget, one final note. Um, a big, big thank you and shout out to a guy named Mr. Max Story. Link in the description, or maybe I'll try to make it an annotation. Um, who's been rebuilding bikes on YouTube and performing various maintenance measures for I think a couple years now at least, maybe a little bit longer. Um, who who gave me who he was the inspiration to me that hey I could get an older bike fix it up no problem um, so yes thank you to Mr. Max Story a shout out and please go visit his channel if you're not familiar with him he's a cool guy